In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at our Fong angle, talk about Fong shading, see what it means, how we can work with it, and also use it to our advantage. So let's go ahead and get started. Talking about Fong angles, Fong shading, it would help to see some good examples of what this means. And that's what we have right here. We have the same object uh, where the only difference is the Fong shading between them. And so Fong shading allows us to decide whether we want to smooth or round um, between edges, whether we want it to be not smoothed or round, okay? Or if we want to go in and specify where we should have that smoothing and not smooth, uh, smoothing ourselves, okay? And so that's what we are seeing here. And this can happen to any piece of geometry, right? Even a cube has, um, the ability to work with this smoothing and and you will often see fong issues uh, on objects that are imported or CAD models uh, and you'll have to go in and either work with your fong tag break the shading in a few places and we'll see how to do that and so as I alluded to a lot of what we're going to be talking about today deals with this fong tag this is the way you can uh, assign a specific angle for an entire object and whether or not you want the shading between edges to be smoothed or rounded. Okay. And that's why this cube looks a little bit funny uh, because essentially what we're doing is saying, all right, we have this edge here. We have um, these two polygons, right? This polygon and this polygon. And we want to decide whether that edge should be hard or smooth. Okay. And we get, can determine that based on this angle and exactly how many degrees it is. So hate to bring math into 3D, but really that's all 3D is, is uh, math. So this is the angle we are concerned about. And for instance, with a cube, that angle is 90 degrees. So if my Fong angle is above 90 degrees, it's going to shade it. And the second this angle gets below 90, then it's gonna go back to looking like a normal cube and we can get rid of our doodle object now. So that is essentially what the Fong angle does. And it's how we can take an, um, this sphere and make it look like the sphere to the right by adjusting the Fong angle. Now you can decide whether you want to specify an angle at all or, in, or if it should just you know smooth everything. You can decide whether what you want that angle to be. And even on a sphere, as you turn this down, you will start to see some of those edges and that shading kind of break or turn hard, right? You can see it happening up top here and it doesn't happen all at once, okay? Because the angles are slightly different between those different polygons and edges. And so as I get lower, you can see that start to happen. The whole idea with shading like this and each 3D program calls it something a little bit different, but the whole idea here is that we can keep a relatively low number of polygons and still have a smooth surface because without this type of shading and smoothing, we would have to use significantly more polygons to get a smooth surface. And that's just not very efficient, which is why we want to make sure we're working with our Fong angles fine. And like I said, you know, if you're working with an imported object, CAD model, that type of thing, if something doesn't look quite right, the Fong um, tag is the first place to go. Sometimes the angle limit isn't turned on, the Fong angle set too high or low, and usually that does it. You can also decide whether or not you want it to use edge breaks for the smoothing. Um, and we'll talk about those here very shortly because that's exactly what I did with this sphere, is I just selected those edges and broke the shading there. And so the way you do that, just set this back to 40. The way you do that is obviously you need to have an editable object. So I'm gonna make that editable by hitting C on my keyboard or hitting the make editable button. I'm gonna go into edge mode here and I can select what polygons or what edges I should say um, we want to break. So if I just select those two loops there, I can right click and at the very bottom here, we have the option to break fong shading unbreak fong shading or select the broken fong edges. So if I just do a break, I think I chose break, maybe not because it didn't do anything. Break fong shading, we should see it start to break. 
Okay. It's not though, because use edge breaks was not turned on. So that's exactly what that does. All right. I also want to point out, we can go back in and do the opposite. So if I have those same edges selected, I can just go unbreak and back to normal. We go. Okay. Can also come in here and do select broken fong edges. So that doesn't really seem to be making a big difference here. I also want to point out without getting into all the specifics of it, but um, the normal of a polygon also can influence this. So the normal is the direction a polygon is facing. And in the case of actually I should probably just do it from this cube. Um, usually you want the uh, normal to be facing outward. All right. So not inward, but outward. So that is what you typically want with your geometry. And if you've ever selected polygons, this color actually lets us know the direction this polygon is facing yellow, orange, whichever color you want to call it means outward. Um, if it's blue, right? If I just come in here, right click and reverse normals blue, that means it's actually facing inward and that's incorrect. Um, for the majority of our objects. There are times you, you may want that, but that can also influence our font. So if I select this polygon and just reverse the normals, notice how that shading is changed. So if I had come in here, maybe I tell it not to use edge breaks, we can still see there's an issue with the shading. And so as much as I would like to say, oh, it's you know, all just a fong angle thing. Um, don't worry about normals. It is something you do need to keep an eye on um, when uh, you are modeling and working with your polygon objects. I also want to point out that you will see other fong options in different objects, different generators, specifically uh, the extrude in this case, where you can decide if you want it to break the the rounding here. Now, obviously in this, in this case, we probably want that on, right? This doesn't look very good. Okay. But depending on the situation, what shapes you have in here, you may uh, need to do this. In fact, right. If you've ever used say the um, fracture object, let's see, ooh, that would be in MoGraph. Okay and set the mode to explode segments that will also, um, well, um, it's not working quite right, but occasionally setting this to explode segments will also, uh, affect the normal or not normals. I'm sorry, the fong angle in shading. So that's something you may need to, um, keep an eye on. It doesn't look like it's going to let me do it right here. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time trying to figure it out. But um, that is something that did happen, though. It is possible they have fixed it. So uh, perhaps that is no longer uh, something to worry about. The last thing I want to talk about as it pertains to Fong shading is using it to help us make selections. And I've talked about this in a, a video uh, previously about working with selections. But from your select menu here, um, you can choose Fong break selection. And notice how that allows me to choose right? All these different areas that um, are separated by a fong break. So I can select all of the top here. I can select that loop, even the, the one where the normals incorrect or the bottom, um, the bottom half, right? Where that break has happened. So another useful tool when working with um, fong angles, fong shading is you can use it to your advantage in selections. But that is a overview of our Fong shading. That will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. And until next time, take care.